year for the first time in 43 years. The NFL regular season expands this time from 16 to 17 games. He's Peter King. I'm Mike Florio. We'll be talking about that and more over the course of the next hour. Good afternoon, Peter. How are you? Mike, I was just thinking today that I was a senior at Ohio University when the NFL first played a 16-game regular season. And I'm just mind-boggled that I've gone pretty much my entire adult life with the NFL never changing the schedule until today. So you're right. It is a historic day. I was in the eighth grade, and I never batted an eye about 14 to 16. It's just, hey, more football. That's great. And the only consideration that I ever saw in the newspaper at the time was that the records based on 14 games would be in grave danger with 16 games. No talk of health and safety, although there was never any talk of health and safety at the time of the players. This time, Peter, the NFL's wanted this for more than a decade. It took a very long time to finesse this, but it was last March when the NFL secured the ability via the latest collective bargaining agreement to expand the regular season by 16 to 17 games that we knew what was going to happen. The question was, would they implement it right away or would they bump it until this year? And we've known for months. You had weeks ago. That's why it was so bizarre. Out of nowhere on Sunday, it's like it's news. The NFL is going to do this. Anyone that's been paying attention knew for weeks, months, this was happening. Today's the day the rubber stamp gets applied to the piece of paper. Mike, there's a couple of things. I, I, I mean, look. I am no fan of extra games because all I've heard for years around the NFL is health and safety, health and safety. And, you know, you just can't tell me when you play 6% more regular season snaps that your players are going to be healthier. It's just, it's nonsensical. But be that as it may, be that as it may, I got a great kick on Sunday of Alvin Kamara of the Saints basically ripping going to se- going to 17 games. And look, there's a lot of players who are ripping going to 17 games. But Mike, 1,019 players voted for the new agreement that said, let's play 17 games. You know, so all of the people who say that this is ridiculous, league doesn't care, league, and all this stuff... The players had a chance to do something about it and didn't do that. You can blame D. Smith if you want. Go ahead. You can blame anybody. I don't care who you blame. But the fact is, 32 players in every locker room, on average, voted for the new CBA. And that new CBA had a provision in it that allowed the NFL, at as soon as... 2021 to play a 17 game regular season so that's why i'm befuddled when i hear people now ripping the concept of it you should have ripped it last march 14th before this vote went down and and it makes no sense to do it now and it does no good to do it now as i said the other day in my column mike it is almost like you hate the outcome of a presidential election And, you know, a year later, you're saying, hey, wait a second. I hate this new president we have in office. Let's get him out of there. You had a chance to get him out of there on the day of the election, and you didn't do it. So the way this country works, this guy is the president for the next four years. You can do something about it in four years, but not right now. In other words, Peter hates the president who's currently in office. I think that's the takeaway from what you just said. I mean, I'm kidding. Um, here's what I'll say to this. The NFL was getting 17 games. It was happening. Whether it happened through a vote last March 2020 that ratified the CBA that had been carefully negotiated for months between union leadership and the league, or if the NFLPA rank and file had voted it down, Peter, it was happening through whatever economic pressure the league would bring to bear on the players. Off-season lockout that lingers into the season because at the end of the day, there is a clear imbalance in the power between the two sides. In that, 
The league will always be willing to shut the sport down for a year to get what it wants. The players, as we learned in 1987, and as we've learned every time since, will not keep a strike going, will not even start a strike, will not tolerate a lockout that causes them to miss any games. When you have that gross imbalance where one side has the nuclear option and the other side won't use it, and one side will, the owners were getting 17 games. The only question was, was it going to be done without a work stoppage or was it going to be done with a work stoppage that would have lasted in the offseason like we saw 10 years ago? So it was coming. It wasn't a matter of, of a vote or regret over the outcome of the vote. One way or the other, it was happening. Two observations. One, if the NFL players did not vote for this new CBA in March 2020, uh, the the players either would have been locked out as of right now, or they'd be on their way to a lockout this year. That's number one. Second observation, there would be no $113 billion new media extension of all TV and streaming contracts. Never would have happened because there was not the certainty of continuous football. And so that is why the reason why uh, the NFL has struck it rich in the last month with all the TV and streaming deals is because they know that there will be games for the next decade uninterrupted. And Mike, as I say, players had a chance to do something about it, didn't do it. So complaining now is just is crying over spilled milk. Right. And when we know that the thing that they ultimately could do, they would never do. This is where we are. And I think that that what that's why D. Smith. That Mike, you, you, you were about to say, and I'm sorry, I stole your thunder. D. Smith negotiates with one hand tied behind his back. He does. He knows that his players don't have the gumption to to strike. And so he knows that he can go to a certain distance. He can go so far. And these, you know, I really get a kick out of the people who say D. Smith is so weak. I mean, walk a mile in his shoes and understand that the reason, if you think he's weak, the reason he's weak is because his players do not give him uh, the basically the strength to go into negotiations by saying, D, D, we got your back. We'll go on strike if you tell us. They won't do it. That's absolutely right. And I think from D's perspective, he recognized there are two ways to do this. And this would have all been a realization he had at some point during the 2019 season when the negotiations began. There's two ways to do it. We can do it in a way that we negotiate, we get a fair deal, we move forward uninterrupted, we lay the foundation for long-term big money revenue from the networks that we share currently with the NFL, or we can get into a big fight and we know how the fight's going to end. If you know how the fight's going to end, why do you go into a fight that can harm the collective business interest and impede, for example, the finalization of the media contracts? Keep everyone from having the long-term certainty that the league now has. That money, people act like that money is only going into the pockets of the owners. That money gets shared with the players. And I've seen people say, oh, well, they waited to announce these deals until after the salary cap went down. Look, that money's future money, and they can move as much of it around as they want. They're still going to share it. Whenever it hits the books, the league and the owners share the money with the players now. So I I agree with you completely. And if the players, for for a a union that will never strike and never accept a lockout that causes the players to miss games, they're doing pretty damn well for not using their nuclear option. I'm amazed the owners don't run roughshod over them even more, Peter. Yeah. I agree, Mike. I don't, you you make it very clear. They're not negotiating with one hand tied behind their back. They're negotiating, you know, with two because obviously D Smith understands what his rank and file 
won't do. And again, look, you know, the players in the NFL are a lot like the citizens of the United States. There are a lot of different, uh, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of different constituencies that D. Smith represents. The minimum salary guys don't want to miss five minutes. And because there are so many minimum salary guys, they hold a lot of sway and they carry a lot of power when you go in with 2,400 players voting or however many there were eligible. I think, if I'm not mistaken, right, Mike? They had uh, about 2,000 players vote, almost 2,000 vote, and they had like 450 that did not vote. So they, they had maybe 82 or something percent turnout. I forget what it was. But in essence, you're still talking about at least on average 32 players per team on the 32 teams uh, voted to approve uh, the 17th game. And it's a stew of competing interest, as you say, the older players, the younger players, the players making not much money, the players making a lot of money, the younger players who are stuck under a wage scale. And the, the, the strangest dynamic of all, you got 90 players maximum on the offseason roster. In what other unionized workforce does more than 40 percent of the workforce get laid off simultaneously in one fell swoop on Labor Day weekend, ironically. More, on Labor Day weekend, more than 40% of the labor force in the NFL is told, please leave. And then they're just out there searching <laughs> for any scraps they can get. And, and that, that, so it's, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. And, and you know what, Peter, last thing before we talk more about the expansion of the regular season. If they had not extended the CBA last year, the salary cap this year under the old agreement would have been like $160 million. So every as bad as it was going from 198.2 to 182.5, it would have been twice as bad if it had fallen all the way to 160. So, look, you, if you're going to criticize the union, it's not – and, and I, I've got no horse in this. I've just been around it for 20 years. It's not union leadership. It's the rank and file. They are, as you said, dealing with two hands behind their back, and it's amazing that owners don't take even more advantage of the power that they have. So they've taken advantage of the power to move to 17 games, three preseason games per team. Not a surprise because it's still a 20-game package. Back pre-78 when it was 14 regular season games, six preseason games, 20-game package. It's been a 20-game package for decades. They didn't want to give that up, Peter. And one more week on the regular season, still starts after Labor Day, pushes the Super Bowl back. Some years it will coincide with President's Day weekend, assuming they stick with 17 games. I don't think they will for very long. That's a different topic. But they got what they wanted. Longer season. And we've got more playoff teams that were implemented as of last year. That was part of the new CBA. And, and look, it's more inventory. It's more money. And as gambling becomes legalized in more and more states, the NFL is going to be very happy. It's put the infrastructure in place to have more games. Yeah, no question. And Mike, you just said, you know, you mentioned gambling. And how interesting is it that now the new... Uh, title sponsor of the Superdome, you know, obviously is going to be a, uh, you know, a gaming uh, corporation, you know, a gambling corporation. And so, you know, I'll tell you one thing. This is a different NFL. This is not your father's NFL anymore. I remember the first few years I ever covered this game. I'll tell you what, gambling was like, it, 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 that was as dirty a word, gambling on NFL games, as fixing NFL games was, you know? And now it's like, hey, bring your, bring your gambling money to the fore. Let's name stadiums after gambling companies. And so, I don't know, Mike. Uh, you know, I think the one thing that we've all learned about the NFL, you know, a couple of weeks ago when Robert Kraft was, was waxing poetic, about Jeff Bezos in, in my column, you know, and talking about how much he admired Bezos and told him how great he was and everything like that. Is there any business entity 
in the United States today that is better at finding a jillion dollars under the couch cushion. <laughs> you know, when you when you thought that ah, they've they've gotten just about all that they could, and all of a sudden, hey, Jeff Bezos, come on over here. You're my new best friend. <laughs> I, I think Mark Cuban needs to dust off his old catchphrase and add something to it. It's pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, boars run wild, because that's what the NFL <laughs> is. And it is unstoppable. And, Peter, I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time before we start hearing 18 games. It's just a matter of time before we start hearing expansion. All these young quarterbacks coming in and showing they can play right away. It results in more quarterbacks who can get it done at a high level, which justifies more teams. We know there's more than enough position players out there, thanks to all the major colleges. But if you want to increase inventory for betting purposes and you can only make the season so big, well, okay, more teams. Hey, that's the safest way to do it. It's more jobs. It's good for the union. It's good for the league. It's good for everybody. And I'm telling you, I thought it would never happen in our lifetimes. 32 was the number that was frozen in. I think it's just a matter of time before we start hearing talk of 34 or more. And once we start hearing talk, that's when we know the gears are moving. And it's just a matter of time before they do it. If we're talking about international football... I would not be surprised to see an international division. London, London, Munich, and pick another one. You know, uh, because to me, I think that that makes a tremendous amount of sense. London, London, Munich, and Mexico City doesn't make sense to me. But that doesn't mean it won't happen. Uh, but I would agree with you, Mike. I, I, will, I would bet that in our lifetime... There's going to be a division of teams, an international division, and that will be how the NFL expands. I don't think you'll see the NFL expand to Portland, Oregon, and, and, to, and to lesser American cities. I think you'll see them expand internationally if they do. Yeah, I think once they cross that bridge with one team, it makes sense to do it with two, and once you do it with two... Why stop there? And again, all those games are going to be televised simultaneously around the world. They're developing the technology, so there's no delay whatsoever, which is conducive to real-time betting on a play-by-play -play basis. That's when the another jillion dollars gets found under the couch cushions once they implement that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.